So I've got this shell script that I feel like if I give it a bit of love and actually put some more effort into it, I can make it into a really cool program. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I made a video on this ages and ages ago. It's a script where basically I have separated out my bookmarks for things like Firefox or Brave into a separate configuration file. So if I want to jump between browsers, then I can easily do that without having to, you know, like actually migrate the uh, bookmarks between them. I can just change which browser I'm opening. And I realized that this actually has a completely different use, but the structure of it fits exactly the same. So basically what I thought was that if instead of working with paths to say websites, I was to work with paths to files, then I could use this to do something like have a bookmark list of all of my configuration files and then open them up in something like NVim. And I realized that there's probably a bunch of other uses for this that I just can't think of. So I thought maybe it would be a good idea to, you know, like properly expand this program, make it into something interesting. I don't know if anyone's done this before. They probably have, but I thought it would just be fun to talk about the process of how to plan out a program like this. How do you deal with actually handling multiple arguments into a script without numbering them? A bunch of other things like that. How to, I don't know, just properly write in POSIX shell script because a lot of people, they will give examples when they talk about shell script in like bash script or Z shell script or any of the other scripts. I want to do this all in POSIX script and it's it's not a difficult project by any means, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about it. So let's actually jump into what we're doing today. So I'll just briefly show you what this program does right now. So if I was to press super B, I've got this list of my bookmarks here. So let's say I want to open up, say, I don't know, Annie chart. So that's a list of anime. And Basically, that'll just open it up in Brave right now. So if I wanted to change this to some other browser, then all I would have to do is if we just go in here, go into my configuration folder for my Simplex Hockey Daemon and go down to my script book menu. So basically, this is how I'm running it. So I run book menu, then I pass in the location to the actual bookmarks file. Then I've got a separator defined between each of the different things in the file and then I'm passing in the command that I want to actually run those bookmarks with. So in this case, I'm running the bookmarks with my environment uh, browser basically. So if I switch that over to Firefox, reload my configs and then I open up AnyChart again, instead of opening up in Brave that now opens up in Firefox, you can tell it's different because I've got VimVix in here as well now. So the reason I thought this would be useful is because a while ago I saw something similar with DistroTube system. So he's got his configuration files in like a D menu script to open them. So I thought that it'd be a good idea to actually make something to handle all of that. So if you want to do your website bookmarks, if you want to do configuration files, or you want to do various other things through that, there's probably other things you could do. Like maybe you want to use it as like a music player or something or a music launcher. So instead of loading in with your browser, you would load in with some sort of music player or there's tons and tons of other things you could do with this. I don't even know half the stuff that you really could do, but I thought that if I can come up with a couple of different uses, surely other people can come up with a bunch of other ones and maybe they'll find this useful. So what I want to talk about today mainly is the planning side. So what exactly do I want to do with this? So I thought a good place to start would be actually defining what sort of options we want available. And I think the best place to start with that is actually working out what options are available within D menu that we want to pass through. So if I just go into Joplin and bring up a new thing in here, a uh, new note, I mean, so let's just call it book menu. So that's what I'm naming this program. At least at this stage, I might change it at some point. So we've got this file open here. So what do we want to keep from D menu that, you know, might actually be a good idea to just keep? So it might be a good idea to let people actually list out stuff vertically if they feel like doing it. So vertical lines. Maybe 
passing in a monitor as well if you want to have it open on one monitor. I guess there's no harm in doing that. Most of the stuff I don't really need to do any actually parsing on. I just need to pass it through to the program. So there's no harm in actually doing that. So same with all these other ones. So the prompt, yeah, sure, you can change the prompt. You can change the font. Uh, font, you can change the... What is that? The background color? Sure, you can change the background color. No harm in that. And you can change the foreground color. And what is that? Defines the selected... Yeah, okay, I guess we can just pass through every single one of these aesthetic ones. This, there's really no harm in passing through the aesthetic ones, like normal, what is that? No, selected, selected color. And the other one is selected foreground color, foreground. Okay, so what else do we wanna do? So that's just the aesthetic stuff that we have. There's, most of that isn't too useful. So what about the actual stuff that we should care about? So we should probably have a help menu because I do want to have a man page at some point, but generally most projects will start with just typing in dash H and that'll actually let you print out some help. So we need help and we should also have a way to define where our bookmarks are stored. So are we using dash B yet? No, we're not. So bookmark, because as I said, you're going to have a bunch of different bookmark files. So I don't think there's any reason to have it so it's all pulling from one location. We should also be able to define a custom config location because a lot of this stuff in here, like the vertical lines, monitor, all this stuff, that can be delegated to a configuration file. You probably don't want to put the bookmark in a config file unless I come up with some way to differentiate them between the different ways you can open it up. I might think about a way you can do that, but for now, I think it's better just to make it so you have to define it. Also having to define a command, so CO, I guess we can do that. So that's the command that you're actually using to launch the bookmark. So the version I showed before was about running it in your browser. But as I said, this is designed to be generic, so there's other things you can do with it. So let's just show the config version. So I ran this just before. Basically what we're doing is we're using a different bookmark file. So instead of pulling from, I think I called it websites or bookmarks, I don't remember what I called it. This one is called configs. I'll think about the name a bit better later, but for now I've just called it configs. We're using the same separator. I'll show you what the file actually looks like in just a moment. And the command that we're running this time is terminal-e nvim. So basically that's saying open up a new terminal and open up nvim. So let's say we want to open up my zshrc for example. That'll take a second load up and there we go. We have zshrc. Or we could open up another one, like let's say we want the bash profile. And there we go, we have our bash profile now. I was also testing some stuff as well, so that's why it's echoing out the path. It normally wouldn't be doing that though. So that should give you a good idea of the actual use cases for it. So if you want to use it for your browser bookmarks, if you want to use it to bookmark config files, a bunch of other stuff. So let's just jump into, I guess, what the file actually looks like, at least at this stage, because it's going to probably go under some changes. But for now, this is a very, very simple script. So what do I Call it book menu, I went way past it. So we'll go with the shorter one first. Basically, this is what the file actually looks like. So on one side, you've got the name of the thing. That's the name that actually shows up within the D menu. And then the other side is the path or the URL you wanna use. So I've set it up so you can either use the tilde character at your home path, or you can write out the full path name. I feel like it's a good idea to include both of those just in case you want to do either, basically. I don't feel like there's any point restricting people to use one or the other. The one thing that may not work right now is relative paths. I haven't tried them, but I feel like it's not going to work properly. Shell script has a weird way of handling paths occasionally, and I might have written a bit of my script in a way that kind of assumes that it's going to be a absolute path. So I'll have to look into that. I haven't tried it. I guess we can... Let's see what it actually does. So if we say transmission, that transmission, and what is the path to that file? LFGC trans, where is it? Transmission. So let's just look at the scene file. Yeah, let's just do that. So we want to look at 
transmission slash scene. That's what we want to do, right. Completely forgot what I was doing. Okay, so for that to actually work, we would have to CD into the config folder. And then if I run that script again, and let's just run it. Will that work? Hey, look, it does work. Okay, I wouldn't recommend running it like that because that kind of removes the ability to actually run it from anywhere because I like having it bound to a key. But maybe you don't want to use it like that. Maybe you actually do want to use those relative paths. The problem with the relative path, though, is that it's going to be entirely based on where you currently are. So I guess they will work. It's just probably not a good idea to use them. So that's good to know, I guess. And what else do we have to cover? So some of the stuff we want to include in the configs, I guess. So the configs. We're going to include all of this stuff. So all of this stuff right here, I'm not going to write it down. The video is already going on long enough at this point. So all of this stuff we're going to include. I want to include a way to actually define where our bookmarks are stored. So that's one thing. Where bookmark stored. So I mean like the root directory to look from because by default, I'm going to say look in the book menu folder, but it might be a good idea to say look somewhere else for them. I guess it's probably a good idea to maybe have an option for that in here as well. Bookmark root. Yeah, it can't hurt to have that as well. So we'll have to change that to like BR, I guess. So that'll change where it actually looks as the root folder to find bookmarks. I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to really have. I guess we can just briefly go over what the script looks like at this point. I can't really think of any other options I'd want to include. The configs I'll deal with a bit more off screen, but yeah, basically that's that for now. So let's go into this folder, into my scripts folder, jump into the script. So before anyone says this script isn't written in like a sensible way, I'm well aware it's just written in a very basic way right now. It's kind of just adapted from how it used to be, which I really didn't care about how it was written. So for now, it just kind of sort of works as it is. So basically what we're doing right now is I'm just directly pulling in those arguments with the numbers. There's a way to actually loop through every single argument. I'm going to implement that in a later video. I'll probably show you just how it's done when I do that. But for now, we're just pulling them in directly. Then what I'm doing is I'm actually getting the bookmark from the D menu. And I'm then like parsing stuff out that I don't need. So I don't need the left side of it. I just want the actual URL. Then if I didn't actually select anything, I feel like it's probably a good idea just to quit the script because otherwise what's going to happen with some browsers, it'll try to like open up your index folder with Firefox. That's what it does. Brave. It just opens up a new tab, which isn't as bad, but I don't know what other browsers are going to do. So I feel like it's probably best to just open up nothing if you actually don't have any input for it. I feel like that, I can't see anyone disagreeing with that being the best idea. Maybe some better way of notifying, maybe have like an optional notification box or something like that. I don't know. I th but for now, this is probably enough. And then what we're doing is we're basically deciding on how we're going to handle the actual URL based on what the URL looks like. So I will assume that all like file system URLs start with this or start with this. I don't think there are any websites that are going to start with either of these. I don't think that starting a website like this line right here is actually valid. I don't think it's valid to start a website like this either. I feel like it's probably safe to decide what I'm handling based on those different setups. Maybe I'll also need to do something for relative URLs as well then, because I did try those, but they also then would have just been opening up within this function right here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm deciding what sort of URL I have, and then I'm deciding on the function based on that. Maybe I should let you decide as a user how to handle it. I don't know, if it becomes a problem later on, I'll let the user decide, but for now I'm just gonna handle it with this very basic case statement, I don't think there's any cases where that's going to break. If someone knows any of them, let me know and I'll happily fix it. So I don't think there's really much else to cover for this. This is kind of just like an introduction to what I'm doing. I'll come back with more of a script complete. I don't think I'm going to do live coding because I'm very bad at coding while I'm talking. As you guys have seen when I just try to write basic stuff in my terminal, I constantly make mistakes. So I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back 
with more of the script written, talk about what I've done, talk about some of the changes I've made. Maybe when I get up to actually making the man page, I'll do that live because that's just writing groff. That's nothing too difficult. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything really. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. This is very different from what I'm normally doing. This is kind of me just rambling about, okay, the rambling part's what I normally do, but rambling about some script that I feel like writing. So let me know how you feel about this. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm still going to make them regardless. But if you do want to see them, then let me know what your thoughts are. And if you've got anything that you want to see me improve, then let me know and I'll happily get to it. So, if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. Just go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my library. So, if you want to see my videos on platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out because any help over there will be really appreciated. It's like a free and open sourcey blockchain platform. So, if that sounds like it's up your alley, go check it out. And I've also got all of my social links down below, so if you want to see like my Telegram, my Discord, and all that other stuff, it's all down below, go check that out. And lastly, I've got my support links, so if you want to support the channel, go check that out. Obviously, you don't have to, because all the videos will remain available for free, but any help will be really appreciated. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.